I will die a heroine, but you will die like a dog. These were the words Miles I met Bum spat at an SS officer as she slapped him, hard, across the face. The blood that streamed from her slit wrist sprayed over his face and neck, and the symbolism of that moment was hard to miss. He literally had her blood on his hands. She would pay bitterly for this act of resistance, which was her last but certainly not her first. Malkazai met Baum, also known as Mala. I met Baum or Mala the Belgian, was born on the 26th of January 1918, in Brisko, Poland. She was a Belgian woman of Polish-Jewish descent. Known for her escape from the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp and the resistance she displayed at her execution following her being recaptured. She was the first woman to escape from Auschwitz. Malazai Metbaum was the youngest of five children. When she was 10 years old the family relocated to Belgium. In school as a child, she excelled in mathematics and languages. She left school to work in a diamond factory after her father became blind. At age 24, she was arrested in the 3rd Antwerp raid of 11 to the 12th of September 1942 and sent to the Dawson Barracks some Mellager in McKellen. On the 15th of September 1942 she was put aboard Transport 10 bound for the Auschwitz concentration camp. After the initial selection she was sent on to the women's camp at Birkenau. Her registration number was 19,880. When I met Baum was sent to Auschwitz in 1942, she was given a relatively desirable job as a courier and translator due to her fluency in German, Polish, English, French, and Flemish. That's where her real legacy began to take shape, many Auschwitz survivors have her to thank for their lives. Her privileged job allowed her to bring food and clothes to those who needed it the most. Warn sick people when selections were coming up so that they could pretend to be healthy. Strike as many names as possible off of selection lists, and send messages to the outside world. Along the way, she somehow, miraculously fell in love with Edward Edick Galinsky, and together they planned their escape. Galinsky had worked as a mechanic before being imprisoned, a job which brought him in contact with civilians working around the camp and with the women's prison where he met Zymet Baum. The plan fell through when Keeler lost a pair of SS guards uniform pants needed as a disguise for their escape. Galinsky told his friend that he would escape with I met Bum instead and would later find a way to send the uniform back to Keeler for his subsequent escape. I met Bum wanted to escape so that she could inform the Allies of what was going on at Auschwitz and thus save lives. She is said by some sources to have been the head of a resistance group. The escape was planned for Saturday, June 24, 1944, when guard would be lighter due to the weekend. The plan was as follows, Kalinsky would dress up as an SS guard and escorts I met bomb through the perimeter gate, pretending he was escorting a prisoner to install a wash basin. I met Baum would be carrying a large porcelain wash basin in a way that hid her hair, so the guards they passed would not know it was a woman he was escorting. Galinsky would show them a forged pass, and they would be let out. I met Baum would be wearing a pair of overalls over a dress that could pass for a men's shirt when inside the overalls. When they got far enough away, I met Baum would dump the wash basin, remove the overalls, and wear the dress, and they would pretend to be an SS guard and his girlfriend on a walk. 
The plan was put into action in June 1944, and the couple succeeded in escaping to a nearby town. After their escape, Galinsky hid nearby as I met by went into a store to try to buy some bread with gold she and Galinsky had stolen from the camp. The passing German patrol became suspicious and arrested Zai Met Baum. Galinsky watched from a distance as Zai Met Baum was arrested. But the good fortune was short-lived, they were caught 13 days afterward, and interrogated and tortured in the hopes that they would reveal their collaborators. Both refused to speak. Knowing she would be killed for the escape, he turned himself in to the German patrol since they had promised not to separate. Zai met Baum and Galinsky were taken to Block 11 in the main camp at Auschwitz, a punishment barracks known as the Bunker, where they were placed in separate cells. Galinsky was eventually put in a group cell with another man. A friendly guard passed notes to them through a hole in the wall between the cell they were in and an empty one. Sometimes Galinsky and Zai Met Bomb would whistle to each other down the hall. When outside for exercise, Galinsky would stand near the window he thought was Zai Met Bomb's cell window and sing an Italian aria. Some say that Zai met Baum and Edek managed to see each other one last time before their execution. Others say that they were only able to exchange messages. You can still see their names today, which they carved into the walls of their cells. When the day came for her trial, Zai met Baum refused to participate in the show. She was going to take matters into her own hands and somehow, probably through one of the many supporters she had amassed at the camp, managed to get a hold of a razor blade. When the verdict against her was being read aloud, she slashed her wrists, and when the SS officer tried to stop her, all her rage, fear, and indignation was channeled into the ferocious slap she delivered to the face of her torturer right in front of the other inmates of the women's camp. She was bitten violently for it, and was probably dead by the time she was dragged off to the crematorium, although the head supervisor of the women's camp supposedly yelled that this beast should burn alive in the chimney. Up. To the very last moment of her life, 26-year-olds I met by remained defiant, bold courageous, a heroine. On the 15th of September 1944, Galinsky and I met Baum were taken out to be executed at the same time, in the men's and women's camps, respectively. Accounts vary as to what happened next. Some people report she said they would soon be liberated. Others report she shouted at and slapped the guard proclaiming that she was dying a hero, while he would die a dog. Still others state that she shouted at the assembled prisoners to revolt, that it was worth risking their life, and if they died trying it was better than the situation they were in now in the camp. She slapped a guard's face with her bloody hand, and he grabbed her arm and broke it. The camp staff jumped on her knocking her to the ground, and taped her mouth shut. An SS officer named Maria Mandel said that an order from Berlin had come to Burns I met by alive in the crematorium. They put her on a wheelbarrow and selected several prisoners from the front of the group of onlookers to take her to the nearby camp infirmary. The nurses bandaged her arms as slowly as possible trying to make her die as quickly as possible. Zai Met Baum said weakly to the assembled prisoners, the day of reckoning is near. On the way to the crematorium, Zai Met Baum told the women pulling the handcart she was on that she knew she could have survived, but she chose not to because she wanted to follow what she believed in. 
Accounts of her death differ. Some said she bled to death on the cart. Others report that a guard took pity on her and shot or poisoned her in the crematorium. Still others observe she had poison on her and took it before she could be burned alive. The prisoners forced to cremate the corpses had been informed that Zymet bomb was arriving, and they made special preparations. They prayed and cried as they burned her remains. The prisoners who had pulled a handcart then went back to the barracks and told other prisoners what they had witnessed. Thank you for watching Death Row.